hi everybody so today we're gonna make beef stew now if you are a vegan or vegetarian you can actually leave the beef out and use mushrooms in place of the beef and vegetable stock in place of the beef broth and you will have a delicious and amazing stew so don't ever be intimidated by substituting ingredients. Um, for those of you who do eat beef, I'm gonna show you my way of bake making beef stew. And there's a couple of things I think that really punch this up another level. So um, this is, these are all the ingredients here. And we're gonna start with the dried mushrooms. That is one of my secret ingredients. And I love this Montreal steak seasoning. It's really amazing with beef. We have the ruby port, just a little splash or two, and a shallot, sea salt, and pepper, which I think sea salt is amazing and has been one of my chef secrets for years. Um, some tomato paste. I love the Yukon gold potatoes in this dish, and I love the way that they hold their shape in the stew we have some sweet onion of course and some organic beef stock the little packets are reduced sodium beef concentrate and i use the one without msg or artificial flavors and this is a carrots some carrots and some celery and this big bad boy is a chuck blade roast i think chuck roast has the most wonderful texture and flavor for beef stew. Um, and then some gluten-free flour. That's just the Trader Joe's brand. And those are our ingredients, except for a couple special ingredients, which I'm going to reveal a little bit later in this video. So, I know everyone loves their Instapot, but I love this cooker by Cuisinart. It is a slow cooker, steamer, simmer, but it browns and sautés. And that's the piece that most slow cookers are missing. So you can actually brown things and simmer things in there. Um, it's awesome. Now on to the beef. There's one trick when you're cutting um, any kind of meat. See how the striations run along the beef? It might be hard to see, but you can see it when you have a piece of meat. Um, they run in one direction. And what you want to do is eventually cut across those striations. So there's a reason why you want to do it that way. Basically, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll show you, I'm just going to cut, cut this into some manageable pieces because that piece of meat is ridiculously big. Um, I didn't have control over the sizes because of the store situation that we're in right now and that is what there was. So the basically this is the muscle of the cow and the lines going down that's the muscle tissue, the fibers of the muscle. So see how I'm, I'm cutting across the fibers? I'm just trying to get some pieces like bite-sized pieces about that big. And they'll get a little bit smaller as they cook down but you want to cut across those fibers and that means you'll never get a really yucky tough piece of um, inedible chewy beef and that's one of the secrets the other thing is I like to trim um, the big pieces of fat off because although it's delicious nobody really wants to buy into a really um, fatty piece of beef stew. So I try to trim that off. I pull it back with the fascia away from the meat and I just trim those parts off. Now if you have a dog, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm gonna show you, see those striations? Now I'm gonna cut across those. So I cut it lengthwise and now I'm cutting across. And that's just another example of what I was talking about. It's a lot of work to cut up these big pieces, but it's way more economical than buying them pre-cut. And a lot of this beef stew meat that you see is a mixture of meats 
So I'm going to add the rest of the Montreal steak seasoning. I don't have very much of this left. So you really want to season your meat well. And I add some salt and some pepper to that too because I'm running a little shy of the Montreal seasoning. And then just a sprinkle, maybe a couple tablespoons of that flour. And then you stir, 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 stir to coat all of the meat cubes. Your pan should be hot with a little touch of oil and it is important that you start with a hot pan. You want to do that because what we're trying to do is build up browning and that yummy fond that develops on the bottom of the pan that's called fond that brown stuff that you scrape up and that's what makes the stew broth so amazingly incredibly delicious and while that first batch is browning i like to cut up the vegetables i want everything to be sort of uh, i'd say like artisan style or um very rustic so rustic means I want big chunks of vegetables and the meat I do not stir for three or five minutes three to five minutes because we're trying to get that crusty brown on the bottom look that's the color right there that's the color that we're gonna go for and so that means if you stir, 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 stir in the pan, it just doesn't make contact with the pan and you're not going to get that beautiful browning. So that's what we're going for right now. Now, if you were doing mushrooms, if you were vegan and gonna do mushrooms for this, um, you would just, again, just almost the same exact method and saute on high and you'll get the, the browning on the mushrooms too. So now flip it over, stir it, and then do not stir it again for three to five minutes. Now remember how I told you I was going to show you a secret weapon? Here's one of them, Bragg's Liquid Aminos. If you've never tried that, I, I also try, um, you could try the coconut aminos. There used to be this thing called Kitchen Bouquet and people use that to encourage browning. And coconut aminos is a little bit sweeter, and um, there's no soy, so if you're not a soy person, the Bragg's is not for you. But I'll just give that a little dash in the meat. And it encourages browning and really um, caramelization on the meat, and you're gonna get a really beautiful effect with that. So that's one of my secret weapons, <laughs> is the liquid aminos. There's my potatoes. All right, you guys, so now onto shallots. The French know what they're doing, okay? And shallots are basically a baby uh, onion and garlic together. I, I'm, I'm sure that's not technical, but what I'm saying is that's the flavor uh, profile. They taste like onions and garlic together and they have a most amazing flavor. So if you're ever out of garlic and you want something similar, you can always use a shallot. And I would always use shallots if I could just get a lot of them. So <laughs> um, just one is a flavor punch though. Now these mushrooms, this is a shiitake, a dried shiitake. And the dried mushrooms can be really expensive in a regular store. Go to an Asian market. I got a huge package of these for like $3.50 and they have lasted me like six months. So they are really packed with flavor. Um, usually you want to reconstitute those with boiling water, but today we're just going to crumble them up because they're already going to go into a broth and they're going to release their beautiful mushroom flavor into the broth. So I'm just breaking those up. I am discarding the very, very, very center because it's super, super tough. So I'm breaking up around it and then I'm just running my knife through there. So Asian market, you guys, for dried mushrooms. That's my tip for the day to uh, find beautiful dried mushrooms for cheap. 
Now once you have all the meat browned, you're gonna add in that tomato paste, just a couple tablespoons. You don't even really have to measure, it doesn't matter. A couple tablespoons, three tablespoons is fine. Give it a stir after that and make sure all the meat is well coated. And this whole time the pan is, I have this set to 350, so it's pretty hot right now. We're gonna turn it down in a second. So I add the mushrooms and the onions and the carrots and the celery and the shallots. And then we add the potatoes. The reason you add the potatoes this early is they're gonna release some of their starch into the broth. And this is amazing because it means you're gonna end up with this beautiful, luscious, sort of thick beef stew uh, without using additional um, thickeners. And the potatoes basically kind of break apart a little bit and they break apart into that beef broth. So you end up with a beautiful uh, stew base. A little bit of ruby port, it goes a long way. <laughs> it's amazing. It adds just a touch of sweetness to it. If you don't have port, you can use red wine. If you don't have red wine, you could use white wine. A little dash of balsamic vinegar or something. You're just trying to add a little bit of acidity to that to balance everything. And um, then I add the beef concentrates. Now, that, you could just put a little tablespoon of um, bouillon if you have it, vegetable bouillon, beef bouillon, even chicken would work for this. It doesn't really matter. You know, using the beef punches up the beef flavor, but I put the lid on and then I'm going to set this um, 250 for one and a half hours. If you don't have one of these cookers, put it in the oven. Same thing, so. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> One and a half hours later, this is what you get. Now, I can tell just by stirring the feel of the meat and the potatoes against, um, you know, my spatula that it needs to cook a little bit longer. So that's what I do. I cook it longer until the meat needs to just break apart gently and easily like this. See how that just breaks apart? And that's what you're going for. That luscious beef. And then just because I love something green, I, I really like to add frozen peas at the very end or something green, parsley if you have it. I have spinach, so that's what I'm adding. And I just stir in spinach right at the very end and it just wilts a little bit in the warm broth. And that just adds a little bit of nutrition and bright uh, greens to the dish. Look at that, you guys. It does thicken up a little bit. It's boiling hot right now, just piping hot. So it does thicken a little bit over time. But doesn't that look amazing? Oh, so delicious. Look at that gravy that it formed by the potatoes. You can see the potatoes have kind of broken up a little bit. They just made a lovely, luscious broth. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Um, I'm taking a bite here for you. <laughs> I hope to see you again. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. I need a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours in order to monetize my channel. So I want to keep making these videos for you. So please subscribe. Thank you so much and have a beautiful day.